Are you looking for a way to automate creating Microsoft planner tasks from Microsoft form submissions? In this Power Automate tutorial, I'll show you how to build this flow that creates tasks in planner each time a form is submitted. First, I'll show you how to create a task using the Microsoft form submission data. Then I'll show you how to place a task in a specific bucket based on a selection made in the form, as well as how to assign tasks to specific users. At the end of the video, I'll show you how to handle Microsoft Form uploads and how you can attach those to your planner tasks. If you are looking for a way to quickly create tasks from a SharePoint list or an Excel table, I already have a tutorial on how to do that. Click here to check it out. There are two primary types of forms you can create in Microsoft Forms, Group Forms and Personal Forms. When you create a new form by pressing the New Form button, you'll be creating a personal form. You can create a new group form by selecting a group first, then pressing the new group form button. For this demo, I've created a group form with a single file upload question. In Power Automate, I've created a manually triggered flow. Using a manual trigger will save you a ton of time when you build your flow. Instead of having to leave Power Automate to submit a form to trigger a test, you can build your flow off of a form that has already been submitted. I've already added the get response details action to my flow. If you can't see your form listed in this dropdown, you'll need to enter the form ID manually like I have. Not sure how to get the form ID of your form? I've linked a section of another tutorial where I cover how to get the form ID in the description box below. Add a create a task action to your flow. Select the group and plan ID. In the title field, insert the appropriate dynamic content from the get response details action. In my case, it's project title. In the due date time field, insert the appropriate dynamic content from the get response details action. In my case, it's project deadline. Save your flow and run a test. In Planner, the task has been created. Next, let's add the task description. Add an update task details action. In the task ID field, select enter custom value and insert the ID dynamic content from the create a task action above. In the description field, insert the dynamic content that contains your task description. In my case, it's project description. I'm going to add a number two to the end of this title so I can differentiate the task created from this flow run with the one that was previously created. Run a test. In Planner, a new task has been created. This task has the description text in the notes field. Now I'm going to show you how to create the task in a specific bucket. The create a task action requires a bucket ID to create the task in a specific bucket. Add a list buckets action above the create a task action. Select the group and plan ID. Next, I'm going to add a terminate action to my flow temporarily so the flow terminates after running this action. Change the status to succeeded. This will prevent these two actions from running. Run a test. Let's review the outputs of the list buckets action. In my planner, I have a bucket for each department. We need a way to return the bucket ID for the appropriate bucket based on the selection made in the form. Insert a filter array action. In the from field, insert the value dynamic content from the list buckets action. In the first value field, insert the value name dynamic content. Leave the operator as is equal to, and in the second value field, insert the appropriate dynamic content from the get response details action. In my case, it's department. Whenever I use a filter array action in my flows, I always output the number of items returned in a compose action. Remember to rename your actions to keep your flow organized. This is especially important if you are using multiple instances of the same action. 
Add an expression. Use the length function. Select the dynamic content tab and insert the body dynamic content from the filter array action. Run a test. Review the compose action and ensure that it's outputting a number one. If your filter array action isn't returning any items, there can be a few reasons for this. The first reason is that the output from the form doesn't match any buckets. The is equal to operator is looking for an exact match. If there is a trailing space or the cases don't match, the filter array action will not filter any items. To prevent any case sensitivity issues, you can convert both of these values to lowercase using an expression. First, hover over the dynamic content label of the first value and note the text between the single quotes. Delete the dynamic content from the first value field. Insert an expression and use the to lower function. The reason you need to note the text between the single quotes is that the only dynamic content available to select from is body and value. Use the item function. Add a question mark, square brackets, and single quotes. Insert name in lowercase. Delete the dynamic content from the second value field. Insert an expression and use the to lower function. Fortunately, when using an expression with the Microsoft Forms dynamic content, there isn't a need to use an expression. Now the filter array action will convert the bucket name to lowercase as well as the choice selection from the form. Although it may look like the filter array action can only accept a single condition, it can take more than one condition when using the advanced mode. If you want to learn how to do that, check out this tutorial. I've also linked it in the description box below. Let's run a test. The filter array action is still returning a single item. To prevent any errors in this flow, add a condition action. We'll use this action to check whether or not a bucket with this department selected already exists. If not, we'll create a new bucket. This way, I can add additional department selections to my form if needed. Insert the output from the Compose action above. Leave the operator as is equal to. In the second value field, insert a zero. If the count of buckets returned is equal to zero, this means that the bucket with the department selected doesn't already exist. In the Yes branch, add a Create a Bucket action. In the name field, insert the appropriate dynamic content from the get response details action. In my case, it's department. Select the group and plan ID. In the no branch, add a compose action. The compose action is optional. I like to use compose actions to output dynamic content from the filter array action. In this particular flow, I'm only expecting the filter array action to return a single item, or no items if the bucket doesn't already exist. The filter array action will always return an array of items even if it's a single item. An array is a collection of items. The first item in an array is zero, second is one, third is two, and so on. We'll need an expression to return the ID of the bucket from the filter array action. Add a question mark and a zero between square brackets. This will return the first item from the array. Add another set of square brackets and single quotes. Between the single quotes, enter ID in lower case. This is the dynamic content key to return the bucket ID from the filter array action. Press the up arrow key to place your cursor at the start of the expression. Click on the dynamic content tab and insert the body dynamic content from the filter array action. You can also wrap the expression in the first function instead of using an array index. It would look like this. Either expression will work. Run a test. The condition action returns false because a bucket with a matching name already exists. Check the output of the compose action to ensure that it's displaying the bucket ID. I'm going to delete the human resources bucket from Planner and run another test.
The condition outputs true since the bucket doesn't already exist. The create bucket action has run, which means that the bucket has been created in Planner. You might be thinking that you have to add a create a task and update task details action to each of these condition branches. While you could do that, it would be redundant. Instead, we'll use a variable. Think of a variable as a container that can hold any value. In this case, the bucket ID. Variables need to be initialized at the root of the flow. Add an initialize variable action above the condition action. Change the variable type to string. In the yes branch, add a set variable action. Set this variable to the ID of the newly created bucket. In the no branch, add a set variable action. Set this variable to the output of the compose action above. In the bucket ID field of the create a task action, select enter custom value. Insert the variable. The variable will be set in either of these branches. If the condition is true, the variable will be set with the newly created bucket ID. If the condition is false, the variable will be set with the bucket ID of the bucket that already exists. Move the terminate action to the end of the flow and run a test. In Planner, the task has been created in the human resources bucket. To assign users to a task, the create a task action requires a string of IDs or email addresses separated by semicolons. In my case, I'd like to add the user who submitted the form to the task. This way, they can keep an eye on the status of the task and update the task as needed. To do this, we can simply insert the responder's email address dynamic content from the form. I'm going to append a number 3 to the end of the title so I can differentiate this task from the one that was just created. Run a test. In Planner, a new task has been created and the user has been added to the task. It's best practice to have the users you'd like added to a task based on a selection in your form stored in either an Excel table or in a SharePoint list. I have a SharePoint list of employees. Each employee is assigned a department. In Power Automate, add a Get Items action. When possible, reduce the number of items returned from this action by defining a filter query. In this case, I'm going to filter employees with the matching department. It's important to note that you need to use the internal column name in your filter query. Keep in mind that the internal column name may not always match the name displayed in your SharePoint list. If you aren't sure how to get this, check out the link included in the description box below. Use EQ for equals to. And in between the single quotes, insert the appropriate dynamic content from the get response details action. In my case, it's department. Just like with the filter array action, I'm going to insert a compose action to output the number of employees returned. Drag the terminate action below the compose action to prevent the flow from creating a task. Run a test. Review the output of the Compose action to ensure it's returning the correct number of employees that match the selected department. Add a condition action. This action is optional. If you are certain that there will be at least one employee assigned to every department in your form, you can omit this action. Insert the output from the compose action above. Change the operator to is not equal to. Enter a zero into the second value field. In the yes branch, insert a select action. 
In the From field, insert the value dynamic content from the Get to Items action. Click on this icon to switch from Map to Text mode. In my SharePoint list, I have a person column. To get the email address of the employee, I need to select the email dynamic content of the person column. In my case, it's the profile email dynamic content. The select action will return an array of email addresses. To convert the array to a string, use the join action or a compose action with an expression. In the from field, insert the output from the select action above. We need to separate each email with a semicolon. In the join with field, insert a semicolon. In the create a task action, insert a semicolon and the output from the join action. Change the 3 to a 4 and drag the terminate action to the bottom of the flow. Run a test. In Planner, a new task has been created. The user who submitted the form along with two other users have been added to the task. To ensure my flow doesn't throw any errors, I'm going to change the department of these two employees to marketing. Change the 4 to a 5 and run another test. The flow runs without any issues. The task is created and is assigned to the user who submitted the form. If you are using Excel, ensure that your data is stored in a table. One of the columns should have values that match the choice selections in your form. Another column should contain the email addresses. Instead of the get to items action, use the list rows present in a table action. This action only accepts a single filter query. Also, if you are using a filter query, ensure that your column name doesn't include any spaces. In this expression, I'll replace the value dynamic content from the get items action with the value dynamic content from the list rows present in a table action. If you are also updating the expression in your flow, don't forget to press update. Delete the get items action. In the select action, insert the value dynamic content from the list rows present in a table action. Insert the appropriate dynamic content in the map field. In my case, it's employee email. In the title field of the create a task action, replace the five with a six and run another test. To reduce the amount of vertical space of the flow, use scope actions to group multiple actions together. This step is optional. I'll use this scope action to group the actions that return the bucket ID. Remember that the initialize variable action has to be in the root of the flow. I'll drag it above the scope action. I like using scope actions in my flows to keep my flow organized. I can also quickly collapse multiple actions with a single click. Lastly, we need to add the attachments to this task. Files uploaded to a personal form are saved to your OneDrive. Click on My Files and click on the Apps folder. Next, click on the Microsoft Forms folder. Each form that has a file upload will have a folder created for it. The folder name will match your form name. It's important to note that if you change your form name after accepting responses, the folder name will match the original form name. You can rename the folders to suit your needs. Files uploaded to a group form are saved on your SharePoint site. Click on Documents. Just like OneDrive, click on Apps, then Microsoft Forms. To better understand how we'll attach the file uploads to the planner task, we need to take a look at the file upload outputs from the form response. Add a compose action for the file upload question.
Drag the terminate action below the compose action to prevent the flow from creating a task. Run a test. The output of the file upload question is in a JSON formatted string. We need to convert this to something we can use. Remove the dynamic content and insert an expression. Use the JSON function. This function will parse the JSON formatted string. Click on the dynamic content tab and insert the file upload question dynamic content from the get response details action. Run a test. Now that the JSON has been parsed, we can easily return the dynamic content of the files that have been uploaded. The update task details action requires an array for the attachment. First, initialize an array variable in the root of the flow. It doesn't matter where you initialize it as long as it's in the root of the flow. I'm going to add mine up here to keep my flow organized. Add an apply to each action after the compose action. We'll use this apply to each action to loop through each file uploaded to the form. Insert the output from the compose action above. Add an append to array variable action. Select the variable. We'll use this action to collect the attachments into the array variable. To get the format of this array, enter placeholder text for the reference alias and link in the update task details action. Click on this icon to switch the mode to array input. Copy the text between the square brackets to your clipboard. In the append to array variable action, paste the text from your clipboard. Highlight the placeholder text between the double quotes and replace them with the appropriate dynamic content. We'll be using expressions to access the dynamic content from the compose action above. Replace the alias placeholder text with an expression. Insert the item function. Add a question mark, square brackets, and single quotes. Enter name in lowercase. This will return the attachment name. Next, replace the resource link placeholder text with a similar expression. Instead of name, enter link in lowercase. This will return the attachment link. Add a compose action. This action is optional. I'm going to add it so I can run a test and review the output of the array variable. Replace the array from the references field of the update task details action with the array variable. Run a test. Review the output of the compose action. I have a form submission where the user didn't add any attachments. I'm going to adjust the response ID from 1 to 2 and run a test. If the form doesn't include any attachments, the flow will fail. This is because the apply to each action requires an array. However, since there aren't any uploads for this form, the dynamic content is null. To prevent the flow from failing, we need to add a condition action. To check if the compose action above is empty, we'll need to use an expression. Use the empty function and insert the output from the compose action above. This expression will return a boolean, aka true or false. Leave the operator as is equal to. Enter true in the second value field. If the compose action is empty, Add any actions you'd like to run to the yes branch. I don't need to run any, so I'll leave the yes branch empty. If the compose action above is not empty, meaning files have been uploaded to the form, we'll want to run the apply to each action. Drag and drop the apply to each action into the no branch. Run a test. The flow runs successfully. The condition outputs true. Drag the terminate action to the end of the flow. 
I'll change the 6 to a 7 in the task title and run one more test on the submission that includes attachments to ensure the condition action is running as expected. The condition outputs as false. In Planner, the task has been created and the attachments have been added. At this time, it doesn't look like you can set whether or not you'd like to show the attachment on the card. You'll need to manually uncheck the Show on Card checkbox. Now that the flow is ready to go, create a copy of it. I always keep a copy of the manually triggered flow for future tests and troubleshooting purposes. Replace the manual trigger with the when a new response is submitted trigger. Place the manually entered response ID with the response ID dynamic content from the flow trigger. Let's run a test. First, I'm going to edit the form and add a new department to the list of choices. The flow has run successfully. In Planner, the task has been created in a new bucket which was automatically added by the flow. What other Planner or Microsoft form automations are you looking to create? Let me know in the comments down below. If you found this video helpful and plan to automate creating a new task in Planner from a Microsoft form submission, please consider giving this video a like. Do you want to quickly add email attachments to a planner task? If so, watch this video. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any other Power Automate tutorials. Thanks for watching.